Welcome back to the Max Reality. If you've seen my face before, then you know the drill. But if you're new here, I love talking all things reality TV. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, maybe check out some of my other videos. Give me a follow. But for now, we are here to continue our journey through Shark Tank Season 15 with Episode 22. But before we can talk about the latest episode of Shark Tank, we have to go back to Season 14 and talk about Stealth Bros & Co. Now, if you've seen my other Shark Tank videos, you know the drill. But if you're new here, Stealth Bros & Co. was founded by Brax, who is a trans man who is looking for a better way to store his testosterone. So he came up with Stealth Bros & Co. They have everything from dop kit bags to sharp containers for your needles, anything you could need to be stylish and secure in containing what you need for your medicine. But they're not limited to just medicine. You can use their bags to store any of your different things that you need. I personally use mine as my like on the go go to bag. This is mine. I like to keep mine in my purse and keep all my little essentials in it and transfer it from bag to bag to know I have everything I can need in whatever bag I'm taking. Also, sometimes I'll just use this bag by itself when I'm running a quick errand like going to the grocery store. It's nice to have something small but can hold all the different things I need when I'm on the go. And this isn't the only size or style bag they have. They make them in all different colors, and there's also a bigger size in this that's more of a toiletry style sized bag, and they have a full duffel bag sized bag. So really anything that you could need for storage and traveling, they have it for you. So check out stealthbrosingco.com. Their link is in my description and use my code SBCMAX20 for 20% off your purchase. Now let's get back into the latest episode of Shark Tank. Our sharks for the episode are Damon, Kevin, Lori, Mark, and guest shark Candace Nelson, founder of Sprinkles Cupcakes. Our first pitch of the night is Mosh. Maria and Patrick walked into the tank looking for $500,000 for 2% of their protein bars for your brain. Usually we would talk about the product next, but we cannot talk anything about this company until we talk about who these two people are. Maria is Arnold Schwarzenegger's ex-wife, and this is their son, Patrick. But Maria, if you don't know, isn't just some like, ex-wife of a famous movie star. No, Maria comes from her own prestigious line of family history. Her dad is Sergeant Shriver, who did a bunch of political activist work, which isn't surprising because his wife was JFK's John F. Kennedy's sister. So this woman is part of the Schwarzenegger family, the Shrivers, which is apparently a pretty big name. I think there's maybe some other stuff, but I mostly know about her dad from the little bit of looking I've been doing, and the Kennedys. So it's safe to say they probably have a little bit of money, but they're here today seeking $500,000 for 2%. Now we can talk about the rest of the product, but we are going to put a pin in this and come back to it. Don't, don't, trust me, trust me. <laughs> here it is. It looks like your average everyday protein bar, except their bars have their special brain fuel that they formulated that are different ingredients that are supposed to help boost your brain. As usual, I'm not going to go through the whole story of why they started it and all of that, but there is a key point that's important, which is Maria's dad had Alzheimer's, and because of that, she, you know, started looking more into healthy ways to help with Alzheimer's, like diet, things like that, and so she wanted to make a product to help Alzheimer's patients, and another way they do that, aside from the product itself, is that they donate a portion of their proceeds to Alzheimer's research. We're going to put a pin in that like we did with the beginning thing because they don't tell us how much. I will give you that. Um, but otherwise, just put a pin in that and what I was saying in the beginning, wrap it all up and we'll talk about it at the end. <laughs> and during her telling us why they decided to start this business and all that, we get this moment. And so Patrick kept saying to me, Mommy, invest in what you want. Invest in your own Do you own still bar. call her Mommy? Yeah, well, yeah, Aww. Maria, Mommy. Now my, now my business wrong with partner. That. Now now, my business nothing wrong partner. with that, I like it. And they are relentless with this. <laughs> she, they call her that. A couple times. Actually, I think every other time after that is Kevin, but still. 500000 for 2%. You're telling me, Mommy, this bar is worth $25 million. Right. Tell me why, Mommy, it's worth that. It costs them $0.93 cents to make the bar, and they retail for around three thirty nine. dollars They've been in business two years and have done $10 million in online sales. In 2023, that year they were filming, they were planning to do over $7 million, and the next year they were projecting to do $11.5 million. Now, the famous question, do we think they're profitable? No, no, 
No. I feel like somebody wanted to say yes. Honestly, I wanted to say yes. It's a protein bar. We're gonna get into it. We find out a big portion of their money and their loss is because of the marketing they do. Last month in sales, they did 675,000 and spent $150,000 on marketing. They say that they spend around $100,000 every single month on marketing. And he says that, you know, if they really wanted to be profitable, all they would have to do is just turn off their big marketing machine and it would be fine. Like they bring up that they have 11,000 subscribers, which is guaranteeing them at least $200,000 every month. So, you know, if they just turned off just a dump of marketing. It would all be great, but they don't want to do that. So, you know, but that's not the only money thing to talk about. They themselves have put in a million dollars of their own money. They raised $1.5 million from friends and family. And then this year, in the year they were filming, they raised $4 million at a $17 million valuation. So where do I get friends that will give me $1.5 million? I won't have a product in return, but I will give you my joy, my laugh, my friendship. I don't know, but <laughs> first we have Candace jumping in to point out that their valuation is ridiculous astronomical and a lot of times i say that she's kind of a boring guest shark for lack of a better word but i will give her credit that she was the first one to really like bring it up with them and i feel like she was like the realist with them about this i, I feel like other people in the room might have cared more about who they were and so they didn't say things they would normally say we'll get to it. They say that they think their valuation is actually really conservative when you look at their sales and growth and the fact that they've only been selling this online. They haven't even started in the retail market yet. Kevin agrees with Candace saying that nobody is really going to like that valuation and he doesn't like their strategy to go into retail because he thinks it's a really brutal space. And I would really appreciate it personally if Kevin could release a list of the products that should be direct to consumer and then which ones can be retail because I feel like he flops back and forth and honestly I feel like if I sat down and really looked at each individual business I'd be able to figure out the pattern for myself for Mr. Wonderful but just to help me you know if you could make me a little cheat sheet Mr. Wonderful I would love it because I just I feel like it's back forth back forth no retail yes retail I feel like I'm I'm, I'm lost. I need to know. Like there are some that are obvious. There are some right off the bat. You see some products and you're like yeah that just needs to be online. That needs to be an Instagram reel, TikTok video. That's the way people are going to find this. But a protein bar, I just, I can, and, and it feels like it flops a lot with food. I should get off my ranting. I've been thinking about this a lot this season, though, as you can probably tell. They start to rebut Kevin by saying that they're actually in nine stores already, and they're one of the best-selling bars in those stores. But that does not sway Kevin's decision, and he decides to go out. Then we have the quick succession of Mark Damon and Candace going out, all for very similar reasons. Mark kind of echoes Kevin, saying that the space is really crowded, but he wishes them luck. Damon talks about how investors want to 10x their investment, and with how it's going now, he doesn't see that happening very quickly, because they would need to get sales into the billions for that to happen. And last... Candace says they're really solving a problem, but again, thinks the space is too crowded and all three of them are out. Last, we have Lori, who starts to give the same speech the other sharks were giving. And finally, the entrepreneurs decide to actually respond to some of this criticism, saying that they want to be more than just a protein bar company. They want to be a brain health company. They want to do powders and supplements, all of that jazz, I guess. They really needed Gwyneth Paltrow for this episode, at least for this pitch, because that's very much a very goop-minded. And Lori decides that she's all about it, so she offers them the $500,000, but for 6%, and this is the beginning of a little counter battle that ends up happening. First, they try countering her for 3.5%. Lori says no, but she does come down from her original offer of 6% to 5%, then they counter with 3.5% plus 1% advisory shares. You're off half a percent. So if you got a little lost, at this point they're offering her 4.5% when she had asked for 5%. 
which, you know, she points out and they talk and they decide they have to stick at the 4.5%. A percent of our... Whoa. And the other sharks start chiming in, saying that the entrepreneurs are making a huge mistake for fighting over this half percent. Mommy, mommy, don't let this happen. <laughs> they then move to the next obvious negotiating tactic, which is to see if she'll give them more money for the higher percentage of equity. Oh, <laughs> Patrick, you're over-negotiating. Well and I said this in another video recently, but Lori has been fighting for her worth this season. When she has a percentage she doesn't want to stay at, the way she starts just selling herself, like cover letter, like 10 out of 10, good for her. Good for her knowing what she's worth. So she says she's sticking at the 5%, and they end up making a deal all together for $500,000 for 5%. Oh my God, I want to make a deal too, I can't yeah. believe it. So good. Thank I you. Just to, I, I just gotta give yeah. you a hug. Congratulations, <laughs> Mommy. Congrats, Thank you very much. So many final thoughts. Where to start? No, I know where to start. We're gonna start with that last clip because I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, why did Damon get up? I don't know. I don't have any answer for why he did that. Most people are just assuming he must know Maria, like maybe they're like friends or acquaintances i i thought it was super weird i thought it was weird that they kept it in i just was like wh why 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 next point is having them on shark tank um to start out with they come from a family where very obviously if they needed a loan or something like that they could just do it in other ways they don't really need to go on to Shark Tank. So this whole thing, not just to me, but to other people, I saw talking about it online, kind of felt like a weird ad spot, almost. There were some people who said when it first started, they thought it was one of the weird in-show ads that Shark Tank sometimes does. And making this the first pitch just put such a bad taste in my mouth for the rest of the episode. Like, I had to keep consciously reminding myself that the other entrepreneurs did not do anything wrong. It is the producer's fault for making that one first and making me upset to start the episode. <laughs> like, there's lots of people we can argue, especially in the past couple seasons, shouldn't have been on Shark Tank. Whether they're sales or other investors they have, all of that. But this one, I feel like, is probably the most egregious in a while. Then we move into the whole helping people with Alzheimer's portion of it. So to start out with the protein bars themselves, I was trying to be very careful about how I talked about it in the beginning because they themselves have been talked to by the National Division of Advertising and told that they needed to take claims off about helping with cognitive function and boosting brain ability. And they did, according to what I read, and all these links will be down below, like usual, my resource article. But according to what I read, they did take them down so, I mean, I just, I think it's so weird to say a protein bar is going to like, I, I just didn't like that. I already didn't like that from the beginning when I was watching the show before I even saw that they were making all these other claims and had to stop. I, I, mm, I get that there is lots of things linked with, you know, what your diet is and health and all different sorts of ways, but it just feels disingenuous to be like, this protein bar can help your brain and can help you with Alzheimer's or prevent it. And that's kind of what it felt like they were saying. Then we move into the second portion of helping people with Alzheimer's, which is the fact that they donate a portion of their proceeds to Alzheimer's research. They never say how much on the show. So I went on their website hoping I would find something out. And when you first go on their website, they have a big banner giving you the same claim of a portion of proceeds donated, blah, blah, blah. And there's a little asterisk. And then if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will find this little disclaimer, which is proceeds shall mean 1% of sales, net of discounts and returns, and excluding any costs of shipping or tax on the purchase. The terms of this promotion, unless extended, shall extend from January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2023. So if you missed the issue with that, um, it's May 2024, so, and it looks to me that their website has been updated at some point in 2024, so it's very unclear why this wasn't updated. Aside from that, 1%, 1%, it just seems, it's just, it's, it's hard for me. I know, I'm not trying to disrespect her at all. 
I understand that that caused her a lot of pain and that maybe deep down in her heart, she really does want to help with Alzheimer's research. This is kind of almost like it's giving me deja vu to the people wanting to fix food deserts. Um, This just isn't the way to do it. Like the money you put into making this business could have all just gone to Alzheimer's research instead of the little 1%. 1%? I just, I am just, when I read that, I knew it wouldn't probably be a whole, whole lot. But to act like you are championing this and you're only willing to donate 1% of your proceeds, it it just, it really just made me, it was the nail in the coffin for this business for me. I just, this pitch just made me, it made me so upset. I had to take a break uh, from writing my notes when I had to rewatch it because watching it the second time and knowing all of what I knew, because I always do my little research before I do my little rewatch, um, made it so much harder to watch that second time. Um, very upsetting. I'm also going to link some different um, Alzheimer's um, places that you can donate to that aren't making you buy a protein bar. You can just donate straight to them. That'll be in my resource link as well. Um, yeah, zero out of 10 stars for this one. I don't want to think about this one again, preferably. I got so focused talking about them that I forgot one of my other little pins from the beginning, which is talking about the sharks, because watching them during this is part of what made it so unbearable to watch. And somebody on Reddit said it so well that I'm actually just going to put it up here and read it for y'all. Absolutely insane. The only time I actually wanted Damon to lecture us about stealing the carpet from somebody who actually needs it. I wanted Mark to challenge the brain health BS. I wanted Mr. Wonderful to welcome them to planet Earth and grill them on their outrageous valuation when they're making no money. I wanted Lori to question the liability of the claim or at least ask for 15% since she makes millionaires. Instead, I saw Damon giving hugs for no effing reason and everyone kissing asses. And I literally... Couldn't agree more. Literally took the words right out, out of my mouth. Absolute masterpiece. Because they're right. All of that is 100% true. And none of them did that. Like, we have seen Mark eviscerate some of these health people. If you don't remember Cabinet Health from last year, Mark is always on it with stuff like that. And he will get down to it. And you can always say, oh, they just didn't show it. And maybe they didn't. We don't see everything but just from the vibe and the demeanor of everybody, it doesn't seem like they ever really got grilled. And they deserve to get grilled. They had a wild valuation. The product had ridiculous claims. I, and, and they didn't deserve to be there. So just strike one, two, three, they're out. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> Our second pitch of the night is Sip Herbals. Orletha walked into the tank looking for $100,000 for 10% of her tea that tastes like coffee. Here it is, and it is a tea that is formulated to give you the same taste of coffee without any of the side effects from coffee like making your stomach hurt or jittery anxiousness. She uses things like chicory root, carob, and dandelion root to give you that taste and mouth feel without the downsides of coffee. Her six ounce bag cost her $3.44 to make, and in the tank she said it cost between $19 and $24, but when I went on the website, the only pricing I could find was $24.99 for the different flavors of six ounce bags, or one that was a little more than that. So I don't know if maybe she was still kind of like working on pricing or w what was going on with that, but it's $24.99. The only sales talk we get is that this year they're on track to do $250,000 and we have a profitable company. Bow, bow. Kevin wants to know what the market is for a product like this. And she lets us know that about 20% of Americans actually can't tolerate coffee, but she is realistic and admits that that doesn't mean that that's her market, the whole 20%, because there are people ultimately who will not give up coffee no matter what. I am one of those people that, you know, no matter what it does to me, I'm having my morning coffee and I'm probably having two. Unfortunately, this is a very truncated pitch. And after that, the sharks all start kind of going out for very similar reasons. Lori doesn't feel like that she's at a place where she can invest in this yet, so she's out. Damon pulls the, it's a great business for you, but not investable for me, stealing Lori's line to go out. And then we have Mark who just echoes the things that they've already said, and he goes out. 
Then we have Candace who says she is a diehard coffee fan. And since she can't be a cheerleader for this product, unfortunately, she can't invest. And last, we have Kevin who thinks the whole thing is too niche. And he thinks it would take a really long time to get a return on his investment. So he too is out, meaning she leaves the tank without a deal. So the first thing I have to talk about is how she began this pitch. I intentionally decided to leave it for final thoughts because it, it's just so silly. She is talking about with her product that she's somebody who like really has to read labels because she's allergic to a lot of things. And, you know, starts talking about the different things that can be in artificial flavors and all that. And she talks about how artificial vanilla is made from beaver butt. What she's talking about is castor, which is secreted from beavers from a gland that is around their butt area. That is what she is talking about. And no, this isn't 100% a lie. She's not making things up, but she's not being 100% really truthful either because that's not really true nowadays. While that was used, nowadays we have a lot easier, number one, and cheaper ways of doing this because having to get that secretion from a beaver, difficult, time consuming, can't get a whole lot of it necessarily. Nowadays, we do things like chemically treating wood pulp to produce vanillin, which is the main flavor compound in vanilla. That's what I read on the internet, at least. So there, my friends, don't be, if you're like weirded out now about artificial vanilla, number one, don't be, I mean, it's just, it's a natural thing. Who cares if it was the beaver butt thing? But you can also rest assured that it most likely is not. Most people, 99.99999% of people aren't using that anymore for artificial flavoring. So y'all are safe. <laughs> the next thing we have to talk about is that this already exists. And if you're thinking to yourself, what? That is okay, because I didn't know that either. I found it out from the Reddit, but there is a brand that's been around since 1993, I think is what I read, that does this literally exact same thing. They are pretty much identical products and they have quite a few more flavors because it seems like they've been doing it a little longer and also it's at a little bit of a cheaper price point and according to that person on reddit it's pretty easy to find in a lot of grocery stores like they have pretty good distribution going on i don't know that for a fact that is just what i read but i did look at both products i looked at the ingredients and it really they're very very similar products so this isn't completely a new thing like she's touting, but she is one of the only ones doing it. It did seem like that other brand is kind of the, the big name of people who do that and then now her. So the next big thing to talk about is definitely the price. I personally think it's a little too expensive, but I mean, she is right that it is very comparable to like premium cups of coffee. So I will give her that, but especially just coming from just a normal black coffee drinker, I, I can't quite, I can't quite make the math, math there for me. In that same vein, before Candace could say what she said in the clip I showed you, I radically said the exact same thing to my partner sitting next to me. I looked at him and I was like, yeah, coffee sometimes makes me sick, but I don't care. I just drink it anyway, because I love coffee. <laughs> I was so glad to be validated by Candace. She was, she was making some good points with me this episode, because same, like, yes, does coffee make my stomach hurt sometimes? Yeah, but it also makes me zoom, so. And to that, I personally wish she would do something like this that does have caffeine. I get that part of her thing is like to take away the side effects of coffee, one of which is jitters from caffeine, but there are other sources of caffeine she could use, maybe ones that are, you know, a little more chiller, like stuff in green tea, for example, maybe. I don't know. I personally would want something with caffeine to switch to as my like better version of coffee. I get where she's coming from, but I wish she would just expand on it to get people like me because I would consider switching if it had caffeine in it. Just saying. I mean, I'm slightly lying. I wouldn't switch over completely again because it'd be too expensive for me to switch over compared to the coffee I drink every day. But I definitely would add it more into my routine if it had caffeine in it. So 
Just saying. You don't have to get rid of anything. Just expand. This is an expansion on the product I want to support. And the last thing I'll add is I am very interested in trying this, though. As somebody who does get tummy aches from coffee and loves a little coffee with dessert but doesn't necessarily, you know, want decaf, both me and my partner are interested in trying this one. So y'all may get a review. I'd also be really interested in trying that other brand I talked about, maybe doing a little taste test. So be on the lookout this summer for Shark Tank product reviews because I've been cooking some stuff up and I'm excited. Our third pitch of the night is Arbor. Vanessa walked into the tank looking for $500,000 for 4% of her organic plant care products. Here it is. She makes anything you could need for taking care of your plants like insecticide and fertilizer. Her big mission is to help the earth. So number one, her products are made with natural ingredients, non-toxic ingredients. Also, the bottles contain a very concentrated formula, meaning you can dilute it with water, and each of these bottles will last you quite a while, meaning less waste. So when the sharks start looking at her products, we get this little remark from Damon. So, what's worth $8 million? Which would be funny, silly, haha, if he'd gotten the valuation right, and this continues, they continue to just run with Damon's off the top of his head math, with this 8 million valuation, it comes up multiple times and it just shocks me that nobody ever corrected it. It never happens. If you're wondering, her valuation is 12.5 million. So not super off, but not super right either. <laughs> For the pricing, we talk about her formulas that are in bottles. It costs her between seven to $10 blended. She wholesales it for between nine and $10 and then she says she retails it in a range from 21 to 25. This is another one where I only saw them for $25. So I I don't know. I don't know what's up with that, but it's well, that's not a good margin. Good margins. They've been in business in 2 years and when they were only 4 months old, they launched in 3,000 Walmart stores and they've scaled to a near full store launch with Target. In 2022, their sales were 2.7 million, and in 2023, they were on track to do 4.5 to 5 million. It's that time of the video again. Do we think they're profitable? No. I feel like y'all are gonna start figuring out if you actually watch more than one of these that the answer is usually no, especially if I'm gonna say it like that. I feel like I'm giving it away. I'm gonna have to like trick y'all at some point. We get really the only line of questioning, which is Mark wondering what it would take sales wise for her to break even. And she says 9 million. And then she says around the 15 million mark, they would hopefully make between one and two million. With that, Mark says that her margins aren't escalating as she's growing, and he likes to chase bottom line, not top line, and because of that, he's out. Candace is worried about the education that will need to be involved with this product, teaching customers why they should buy this over what's already out there, that plus her margins for wholesaling make Candace ultimately go out. Damon says at the moment, she's kind of in a bunch of different places, which is good. She's just starting out. She needs to explore all of these different things. But because she hasn't really defined the business down all the way yet, he doesn't feel comfortable investing. And because of that, he's out. Lori gives us one of our classic Shark Tank lines. I'll be a customer, but not an investor. And she's out. And once again, all roads lead us to Mr. Wonderful. Arnold Schwarzenegger's son tried to steal that line for Lori when they were pitching. When it got down to just Lori, he was like, all roads lead to Lori. It's like, that's not, that's not the saying. That's, you're not a Shark Tank fan. Be quiet. Like what? It, it was just another thing that made me angry about that pitch. I have to leave it. It's in the past. It cannot hurt me anymore. We are on Arbor. Anyway, Kevin isn't sure that the business is worth 8 million, which again, so funny. Never, ever, ever corrected. It's like, if I were her, I'd be like, sir, it's not worth 8 million. It's actually worth 12.5. I'm just kidding. I would not recommend saying that. He also isn't sure how he would ever get his money back. Royalty? I don't know. You're the royalty man. <laughs> <laughs> and with the word royalty thrown out there, Kevin is reignited and decides to make her an offer of $500,000 for 5% and a royalty of $1 a unit until he's paid back $1.5 million. You're allowed to say no. She tries countering the royalty to 50 cents, but 
Mr. Wonderful is not budging. He is set with his offer. And she ends up taking Mark's advice and declines Mr. Wonderful's offer, meaning she leaves the tank without a deal. We're going to start final thoughts strong with something I've already said this season, which is I don't know one singular thing about plants, plant care. I don't know. So I can't really talk about any of that. One of the first things I'll say, though, is one of her main points about what makes her product different is that nobody is using the exact strain of the active ingredient she uses and i immediately saw somebody on the shark tank reddit being like um there actually is a product out there that uses that same active ingredient and while what the person on reddit is saying is correct i still will give credit to them because what it is is a different strain of that active ingredient if you look at the two labels closely enough you will see the difference. So, you know, I will give her that if she is the only one using it and it is super effective. That's great. I found some scattered reviews on Reddit from different plant caring groups on there. A lot of people did say they liked it. I did find a few people saying it's overpriced and like one person that really didn't like it. But again, I'm not a plant care expert. I have really no idea if this is overpriced or if it works. So I would leave that up to you if you are a gardener. Definitely let me know all of your thoughts and feelings below. I don't think that I also would have made that deal with Kevin. I think if I were her, I probably would have said no to that too. Also, just don't think I would have suggested a royalty in the first place because she's having some issues with her margins, which maybe Kevin could fix, but I, I don't think I'd want to be doing that if I was already struggling with that and not profitable. That's my personal opinion on that part at least. Our fourth and final pitch of the night is Flouse. Sam walked into the tank looking for $250,000 for 5% of their electric flosser. Here's what it looks like and it works similarly to an electric toothbrush. The heads are removable and disposable. You pop a new one on when you want to use it and it vibrates to help get out that gunk between your teeth and gives you an easier, more enjoyable experience when flossing. For the cost breakdown, she talks about her starter kit. It cost her $10 to make, and in the tank she said it retailed for $99, but this is another one where that is not what it says on their website. So for this one, it looks like the cost is $119. They have two different options when you're buying the starter kit. The subscribe and save option, where you're setting up to subscribe to get the little floss heads sent to you, or there's a one-time purchase, and at that price, it's 95 This, again, I've talked about it a bunch of times before. I have no way to know if the sale is just one of those, like, gimmicky sale things where it's always on sale, or if it actually is. Who knows? Either way, no matter what, none of those numbers were 99 so I don't know what was up with this episode and the retail price, but it was just all over the place. She first launched the business on Indiegogo, and in the past 12 months, they've done $900,000 in sales, and I won't even make you guess this time, no, they are not profitable. 75% of the businesses this episode weren't. Incredible. However, she says they do plan to be profitable next year. She says the main reason they took a loss this year is because they had to spend a lot of money on research and development and inventory, which won't be as much of a problem next year. We get a couple more fun number things that I'll throw in there. Number one, we find out her customer acquisition cost is $38, but she also tells us that she is first order profitable, meaning the first time somebody buys from her, they are making money. You do not need them to come back and make multiple purchases, which, fantastic. Also, they get a three times return on ads without having done any PR publicity. So. Fun numbers. Then there's some less fun numbers. For example, they've raised a little over 3.5 million over two and a half years. The last valuation they raised at was 8 million, so she is giving the sharks a little bit of a discount. And left over, they have about a million dollars in the bank. Kevin has talked about before that he's very familiar with the dental industry. And he asks her what's going to stop the big players from completely crushing her. And she lets us know that she has three patents that have been issued and two patents that are pending. Then Lori jumps in right away to say that she owns one of the water pick things. She loves it. And this just doesn't seem like the right investment for her. So she's out. 
Mark jumps in immediately after that to say that he thinks it's a great product, but this just isn't really in his wheelhouse, and he also goes out. Our guest shark, Candace, wants to know what is her long-term vision for the business, and she says that she wants to create the oral beauty space. She tells us that there's already a trend of people caring for their teeth in the same way they do their skin and face and nails, and she wants to really forge that path with this brand. It seems Kevin likes her answer of how she'll defend her product against the bigger players out there, and he decides to make her an offer. He says he's really interested in the product, but hates the deal he she's presented, so he offers the $250,000 for 5% and a royalty of $2.50 a unit until he's paid back $750,000. Candace jumps in to say that Kevin's offer is completely cold-blooded, and she has an offer of her own of $250,000 for 8%. Kevin, hearing this, decides to sweeten his own offer by lowering the equity ask from 5% to 3%. But that's not all, because we still have Damon, who decides to make his own offer of $250,000 for, I'll let you make a guess, make a guess in your mind, 10%. $250,000 for 10%. 2% more equity than Candace. Why? I, I don't know. Maybe in the show he gave some sort of explanation why he thought his equity should be more than what Candace was asking. We didn't get to see it if it happened, though. Super weird. Super weird in my personal opinion. <laughs> At this point, all of the offers have been laid on the table and it is time for her to decide what she wants to do. Well, these are all amazing offers. Um... Not all of them, don't lie. <laughs> her first attempt at negotiating is to see if Candace would be willing to raise the money of her offer to either $300,000 or $350,000, but Candace declines. She then tries the move of trying to see if the sharks will come together if two of them in particular will bring their offers together. Damon says he feels like him and Candace would be bringing very similar things to the table and wouldn't really complement each other, so he says that he does not want to partner up together. After doing what she could to try to negotiate the offers, it seems they're all pretty set in stone, and she ends up deciding to make the deal with Candace for $250,000 for 8%. The very first thing we have to talk about in Final Thoughts is she came into this tank and told us that part of how she came up with this product is she went to the dentist and they told her she had nine cavities. That's wild to me. I personally can't be talking anything though because I desperately need to go to the dentist so God I guess only knows what might be going on in my mouth. But that just seems wild to me as somebody who never really got like barely any, if if any, cavities growing up. That just seems wild to me. As for the product itself, she is doing a pretty brand new thing. There is one other company that makes an electric flosser that's very similar to hers. It looks like they launched at pretty similar times with hers coming out first. I will say the other one, though, is made by dentists. They have a couple differences in them. I'm pretty sure the one made by dentists is a little bit cheaper, but they're definitely both on the premium side of things for oral care. It's definitely something that you would think in the next couple years, once they kind of get the manufacturing of it down, hopefully it'll get lower in cost, just like electric toothbrushes eventually did. I can't talk about this product without also mentioning Happy Floss from last season. They made compostable little flossers, the little, the ones that are usually made out of plastic that you see. She made a compostable one, and I know when I made that video, I was like, there has to be something better, because her whole idea was kind of similar to Sam's idea of people don't like flossing, but people do like those little one-time flossers because they're easier than, you know, holding the string of floss. So that way you could be more eco-conscious and hopefully floss more. And at that time, I was like, there has to be something better than that. And so maybe there wasn't, but I will say I think this is the better version of that, in my personal opinion. When I look at the two products as somebody who does need to floss more and who does like those little plastic flosser things, but does hate the waste they cause, I would definitely be picking this thing, especially because the electric part of it, kind of like massaging your gums and all that. I'm, I'm kind of into it personally. I can't really afford something like that right now, but it's definitely on my radar. I, I, 
I can't say I'm not interested. I, a little gadget might get me to floss. Who knows? Can't guarantee it. It may just sit there forever, but it might work. <laughs> I've said it once, but I'll say it again. There are certain things that I have a positive bias towards. Fun little drinks and fun little gadgets. All I can do is admit I have a problem, but I cannot change that about myself. And that, my friends, is a wrap on Shark Tank Season 15, Episode 22. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a like. Maybe check out my other videos and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check out Stealth Bros & Co. and use my code SBCMAX20 for 20% off your purchase. As always, I want to hear any and all of your thoughts, feelings, opinions, all of that and more down below. And until then, I'll see y'all in the next one.